Hi, this is Carol again, and I am with the First Presbyterian Church, and we are reading the book, uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We are on to chapter four, and there is one word in chapter four I'd like to go over with you. Um, they refer to a fur mantle. A fur mantle is a fur cape, okay? And if you remember, in chapter three, Edmund has through the wardrobe. Remember, he was looking for Lucy. He didn't find Lucy, but he found the Queen of Narnia. And the Queen of Narnia was questioning him on who he was. So let's start. Chapter 4, Turkish Delight. But what are you? said the Queen again. Are you a great overgrown dwarf that has cut off his beard? No, your majesty, said Edmund. I never had a beard. I'm a boy. A boy? Do you mean you are the son of Adam? Edmund stood still, saying nothing. He was too confused by this time to understand what the question meant. <sighs> I see you're an idiot. Whatever else you may be, said the queen, answer me once and for all, or I shall lose my patience. Are you human? Yes, your majesty, said Edmund. And how, pray, did you come to enter my domain? Please, your majesty, I came in through the wardrobe. A wardrobe? What do you mean? I opened the door and just found myself here, your majesty, said Edmund. Ah, said the queen, speaking more to herself than to Edmund. A door, a door from the world of men. I have heard of such a things. This may wreck it all, but he is only one, and he is easily dealt with. As she spoke these words, she rose from her seat and looked at Edmund full in the face, her eyes flaming at the same moment as she raised her wand. Edmund felt for sure that she was going to do something dreadful, and then all of a sudden she stopped. Then just as he gave himself up for loss, she appeared to have changed her mind. My poor child, she said in a quite different voice, how cold you look. Come, come sit by me. Yes, yes, here on the sledge. And I will put my mantle around you and we can talk. Edmund did not like this arrangement at all, but... He dared not disobey her. He stepped on the sledge and he sat at her feet and the fold of her fur mantle around him and tucked it in well. Perhaps maybe something hot to drink, said the queen. Should you like that? Oh yes, please, your majesty, said Edmund. His teeth were chattering. The queen took out something from under her wrapping, a little bottle that looked as if it were made of copper. Then holding it out in her arm, she let it drop on the snow. It shined like a diamond, but at the moment it touched the snow, there was a hissing sound, and it stood up like a full cup full of something bubbling and steaming, and the dwarf immediately took this and handed it to Edmund with a bow and a smile. Not a very nice smile though, and Edmund felt much better as he began to sip on this hot drink. It was something he had never tasted before, very sweet, foamy and creamy. And its warmth, oh, it warmed him right down to his toes. It is dull, son of Adam, 
to drink without eating, said the queen. And what would you like to eat? Well, Turkish delight. Your Majesty, said Edmund, and the queen put another drop from her bottle and it fell to the snow and instantly appeared a round box tied with a green ribbon, which when opened turned out to be several pans of Turkish taffy. Each piece was sweet and white and the very center of it, oh, Edmund, oh, he had never tasted anything so delicious. He was quite warm now and quite comfortable. See, even Freddy likes something sweet, creamy and delicious. This is Freddy and he's going to have his Turkish taffy. And you know, once you have one Turkish taffy, you must have another and then another and then another. While he was eating, the queen kept asking him questions. And first Edmund tried to remember that it was rude to speak with one's mouth full of Turkish taffy. But soon he forgot about this and thought only that he was going to try shoveling all that Turkish taffy he could into his mouth. And the more he had, the more he wanted to eat. He never asked himself why the queen should be so inquisitive. She got him to tell her that he was had one brother and, and two sisters, and that one of his sisters had already been to Narnia, and that he met the fawn. And there was no one except himself and his brother and his two sisters knew anything else about Narnia. She seemed especially interested in the fact that there were four of them. Kept on coming back to it. You are sure that there are only four of you? She asked. Two sons of Adam's and two daughters of Eve? Never more or never less? And Edmund, with his mouth full of Turkish delight, kept on saying, yes, I told you that before. And forgetting to call her your majesty, he, he, but she wasn't, didn't seem to mind it now. So that was okay. At last, the Turkish taffy delight was finished. And Edmund was, oh, he was looking very hard in that empty box and wishing that she would ask him if he, if he wanted more. Probably the queen knew quite well that he was thinking that uh, he wanted more, for she knew, though Edmund did not, that this was an enchanted Turkish delight. And that anyone who had once tried it at once wanted more and more and more and would want, not want to taste this and not want to give it up. Ah, <sighs> he would be allowed to eat it forever, but she did not offer him any more. Instead, she said to him, son of Adam, I so much would like to see, meet your brother and your sisters. Will you bring them to me? I'll try, said Edmund still looking at that empty box of Turkish taffy. I'll be able to give you some more Turkish taffy if you do that now. The magic will only work once. In my house, it would work another time. Why can't we go to your house now, said Edmund. When he had first got out of the sledge, he had been afraid that she might drive away with him to some unknown place from which he would not be able to get back to the wardrobe. But he had forgotten all about that fear now. It is a lovely place, my house, said the queen, and I am sure you will like it. There is a whole room full of Turkish taffy. And what's more, I have no children of my own, and it would be nice, it would be nice to have a boy whom I could bring up as the prince, and who would one day be king of Narnia when I am gone. While he was prince, he would wear a gold crown and eat Turkish taffy all day long. And you would be such a clever and handsome young man I've ever met. I think I would like to make you prince someday, and you, 
can bring the others to come and visit me. But why can't we go there now, said Edmund. I, his face had become very red and his mouth and fingers were very sticky from the Turkish taffy. He did not look either clever or handsome, whatever the queen might have said. Oh, but if I took you there now, she said, I wouldn't see your brother or your sisters. I very much want to know your charming relations. You are to be the prince, and later on, the king. And that understood. But you must have cur uh, couriers and nobles. I will make your brother a duke, and your, sister the du your sisters can be the duchesses. There's nothing special about them, said Edmund, and anyway, I could always bring them whenever I wanted to. Ah. Uh, but once you are in my house, said the queen, you might forget all about them. You would be enjoying yourself so much that you wouldn't want to bother going back to fetch them. No, you must go back to your own country now and come with me another day and you will bring them. You understand? It is good to come, it isn't good to come without them. I would not be happy. But I don't even know the way back to my own country, said Edmund. It's easy, said the queen. Do you see that lamp? She pointed with her wand. And Edmund turned and saw the same lamp post under which Lucy had met them with the fawn. Straight on beyond that, in the way to the world of men. And now look the other way, she pointed, the opposite direction. And tell me if you see two hills rising in the trees. Yes, I can, said Edmund. Well, that's my house in between them, in between those two hills. So next time you come, you have only to find the lamppost and look for those two hills and through the woods till you reach my house. And you can better keep the river to your right when you get to them. But remember, you must bring the others with you. I might have to keep, I might be very angry if you don't bring them. I will do my best, said Edmund. And by the way, the queen said, you mustn't tell them that you met me. It would be fun to keep it a secret just between you and me wouldn't it? Make it a surprise for them. Just bring them along over between the hills. You're a clever boy. You will think of something, some excuse to get them there. And when you come to my house, you can just say, let's see who lives there. I'm, I'm sure that you will find something to say. If your sister has met the fawn, she may have heard strange things about me, nasty stories that will make her afraid to come to me. Fawns say things, you know, you know, say things from now that aren't very pleasant. Please, please, said Edmund suddenly, please, can't I have one more piece of Turkish taffy delight to eat on my way home? Oh, no. No, said the queen with a laugh. You mustn't wait till the next, you must wait till next time. While she spoke, she signaled to the dwarf to drive on. But as the sledge swept away and out of sight, the queen waved to Edmund, calling out, Next time, next time, don't forget, come soon. Edmund was still staring afar at the sledge when he heard something. Someone was calling his name from another part of the wood. Oh, Edmund, she cried. So you've got here too. It's so wonderful to see you now. All right, said Edmund. I see you were right. It is quite a magical wardrobe after all. I'll say I'm sorry if you like, but where on earth have you been all this time? I've been looking for you everywhere. Well, I don't know how I got in without 
waiting for you, but Lucy said, I'm, I'm happy and excited to see you. Edmund, I've been having lunch with Mr. Thomas and the, and the fawn, and he's, well, well, the white witch has done nothing to him for letting me go, so he thinks that she can't have found out that perhaps everything's going to be all right, Edmund. The witch doesn't know I've been here. The white witch, said Edmund. Who is she? She's a perfectly terrible person, said Lucy. She calls herself Queen of Narnia. And though she's not quite right to be called the queen, and the fawns and the dyards and the narads and the dwarfs and the animals, at least all the good ones, simply hate her. And she can turn people into stone and do all kinds of terrible things. And she has made the magic, her magic, to make the winter in Narnia always winter. But it never gets to be Christmas. And she drives about in a sledge, drawn by reindeers, and her wand in her hand and a crown in her head. Oh, Edmund was really feeling uncomfortable from having eaten too much sweets. And when she heard that the lady that he had made friends with was a dangerous witch, the lady, oh, but he still wanted to taste more taffy that the lady gave her. Again, more and more, he wanted anything else, but he wanted that taffy. <sighs> Who told you all that stuff about the white witch, she asked. Oh, Mr. Thomas and the fawn, she said. You can't always believe what a fawn says, said Edmund, trying to sound as if he knew far more than Lucy did. Who said so, said Lucy. Everyone knows that, said Edmund. Ask anyone you like, but it's pretty poor sport standing here in the snow. Let's go home. Ah, oh, yes, said Lucy. Oh, Edmund, I am so glad to see you. The others will have to believe us now that Narnia is real. What fun it will be now. But Edmund secretly thought that it would not be good fun for him or for her. He would have to admit that Lucy was right before all the others, and he felt for sure the others would all be on the side of the fawns and the animals. He was already more half on the side of the witch. He did not know what he would say or how he would keep his secret once they all started talking about Narnia. By this time, they had walked a good way. Then suddenly, they felt some fur coats around them instead of the branches. And the next moment, they were both standing outside the wardrobe in the empty room. I say, said Lucy, you look awkward, Edmund. Don't you feel well? Oh, I'm all right, said Edmund. But that wasn't true. He felt very sick. Come on then, said Lucy. Let's find the others. We have a lot to tell them. And what a wonderful adventure we shall have now, thou that we all know it's true. End of chapter four. Thank you so much and you all have a nice week. And maybe I can get Freddy. Freddy, come here. Come here, Freddy. Come on. Maybe I can get Freddy to say hello to you and say goodbye because Freddy loves that taffy and he loves you all and all a good night. See you next week.